in the reduce, what it does is it's going to take in um, some key and then the set of um, um, then the set of all the values that are associated with this key. So there's this magical phase in here. Uh, this is called the shuffle phase. And what it does is it takes all the outputs from all the mappers, and it somehow gets on one reducer, and this reducer will now be one of the computers in your cluster. It will have, for each, it, it will be handling one of the keys, and it will get all the values associated with that key. So the shuffle phase automatically does this for you. It's done all behind the scenes, and you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and so this will all be on one computer. You don't have to worry about your data being stored in other places. And so what you do is you look at this data, and you look at a function of this key and these values, and you, again, are going to output some set of these key, um, of these key value pairs. And then these key value pairs are written back on disk in some way so that the input again, the output is going to look like the input was in some way. You have, it's broken into these blocks, 60, 64 megabyte blocks or so that have been distributed on, on the, the computers. And so after you, this is one round. Um, um, this is one round of MapReduce, and then you can do a few numbers of rounds to try and compute something. And so this is the framework um, that we'll be working with. Then. We'll be working with them. These allowable operations. Okay. So I, I gave. I went through. Um, I guess it's been almost two weeks since since the last lecture. Um, I, I went through uh, a few very basic examples um, for the word count and for indexing, where I showed how to do that in the in one round of this uh, this framework. I think. Um, so. What we're going to do today is we're going to do some more, um, like a, a more interesting algorithm, um, which is one of uh, one for counting triangles, um, and uh, to kind of show a little bit more of the complexity that these things can take. Then on Friday we'll look at how this this kind of restricted model you can you can reduce any algorithm that you develop for PRAM or in uh, on BSP, one of these more general parallel algorithms that's been studied for a long time into this framework. So this is not as restrictive as it seems. Um, however, these reductions are not going to be perfect reductions. They're probably going to not be the most efficient algorithm for doing stuff. Um, and then we'll have another lecture or two about some more interesting algorithms, which will probably go beyond the sorts of things you can get with just a reduction. Yeah. Uh, in Map is that we uh, produce some intermediate pair, and after that we reduce we use uh, those uh, pairs, okay? Right. Those yes. But so here uh, uh, I can understand you uh, produce coupling between, and but use V one, V two, something like that. In reduce step, you should uh, use that those V three, V one. So. What's going to happen is the map step is going to have many computers in parallel looking at these key value pairs, and these were from the set M you had as your input. Okay, it looks at all those key value pairs. Each one will look at once, and it'll generate a set of these key value pairs, okay. and it will put them to the output. And, and we reduce, we use those, and and these are the ones that are looked at by the reduce. Then the reduce, all of these. It will somehow shuffle them so the ones that have the same key wind up on the same computer. So that once you have all the things with the same key, then you can look at all their values and somehow output more key value pairs. Okay. Any more questions on that? Um, all right, so uh, we're going to look at graphs. Um, and so we'll have a graph G, and it's going to have um, a set of vertices E, and a set of edges E. So just a reminder, you can have a graph, and these five things will be the vertices, and then the edges are going to be the things which are going to be defined by these 
pairs, pairs of these vertices. Right? So if this is going to be vertex A, B, C, D, and E, then you would label this specific edge as, um, as A, B. Um, and so for this purpose, we'll look at uh, uh, just undirected graphs. You can have directed graphs as well. Let's not worry about that. Okay. So oh, when you're looking at graphs um, in MapRoot's setting, the, the the most the kind of the general way of, of looking at it is, um, is is often where your input set um, is you know is going to be these key value pairs, and the key is not going to be important. Um, but the value is it's going to be an edge, um, right? So, so that the value here, which is this set, this is the value, is going to be some edge. So each of the key value pairs is going to be an edge, and you have they're distributed some way how they're stored on the system. Okay? Um, so, so, so it's going to be the set of these edges, and the, the key is, is is not really needed for anything. Um, so, um, okay, so we're going to look at this and the, we're going to say the set of vertices is going to be of size n. So this is the cardinality of the set of vertices, in this case it's 5. And the set of the edges we're going to say is m. Um, in this case, this is going to be 6. Okay, so, um, so typically, um, we know that M, we're going to have at most, we usually think we have at most one edge between every pair of vertices, otherwise it's, it's redundant. So that means this is less than um, M choose 2, which is all of, you know, basically M squared. Um, so th th there have been, uh, for a while it's debated like how dense were these graphs? How big actually is M compared to N? Is it actually, if all the edges are present, it's going to have about n squared different edges, right? But there's been thought that the graphs are actually sparse, where the the number of edges may actually grow linearly with the number of graphs. That would be that if every vertex had only a constant number of, of say, at most 20 edges, then no matter how many vertices you had, your the number of edges was at most um, 10 times the number of vertices, because edges shared by two vertices, right? Um, but in, in practice, people have found that, that M is usually um, N to the 1 plus C. It's some, it, it's some, uh, some power. And, and usually, the C is in the range of 0 0.08 to 0 0.5, somewhere in there. So, so we know that if it was, if there were, um, if, um, if the graph was connected, then the C must be at least zero. You must have at least as many, roughly as many uh, edges as you do vertices. If it was dense, then C would be one, right? That was the case where you have all the edges. In general, it's somewhere in here between uh, 0.08 and 0.5. Um, so I, I looked at some example data sets. So if, if you look at this um, um, snap.stanford, um, there's this, uh, it's a research group. They have a website that has a lot of, um, 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 there's a large data set you can download with, uh, um, with large graphs on them. And, and I looked at a couple of example graphs that they have, um, just to kind of show you what these concepts look like. And in another lecture in a couple, um, I think next week, Wednesday, we'll look at other algorithms that, that deal with, with graphs where this constant is actually important to pay attention to. Um, so there's a, um, there's a subset at Facebook where um, four, uh, four n is about 4,000 and, and uh, m was about, um, um, and, and m is about 88,000. And so this may C to be about 0.37, right? This is an example. So there was a, um, so it, it was just a subset of Facebook. Let's see, they have a large, um, um, 
on the large graph, um, on the large graph from Life Journal. And let's see, they had about um, um, 4.8 um, million um, notes, and they had about um, 69 million, um, 69 million edges. Okay, so if, if these are if these are your uh, your sizes, then C equals about 0 0.17. Okay. So you could say, well, the, the, you know, maybe these are going um, in a way that's linear. You know, you have something that's about, you know, a factor um, times, uh, what is this, like a factor times 20 roughly, you know, 15 to 20. Uh, maybe that's also true. So there's still some debate of whether this growth is, is polynomial or it's linear. Um, but you, you can model the size of M as being, you know, s you know s maybe n to the 1 plus C. Okay, but it's, it's going to be some large numbers, right? So you have, here you had 4.8 million nodes and 69 million edges. Um, they have another example on there um, from the Friendster social network where they had um, what this, 65 million nodes and they had uh, um, 1.8 um, billion edges. And in this case, again, C is one um, was uh, um, was about 1.85. Um, so, um, so if you have the full graph of Facebook, then there are roughly um, 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 there are roughly one billion people on Facebook right now. Um, so I'm not sure what the constant is for Facebook. If you, if you knew if you had an edge every time someone was uh, was friends with someone else on Facebook. Um, so it's, uh, um, that'd be interesting if someone knew what that was. But um, I, it, it, you know, it would probably follow all friends, somewhere there. Our friends is sort of hard. There's a good estimation of them. Yes. Our friends. But that's a like, very interesting thing is all the other connections, all the other edges. But the edges other than the friends. Yeah. Oh, like if, if someone sent someone. Comments, a, like, photos, yeah, yeah. texts, whatever. There's like a gazillion of them. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you can try and keep keep track of this and. So for example, this one I think is from this Facebook. This data set I think is from one of the North European country, and it's only a subsample of that North European country. Yeah. They didn't have a sub stars or something. Yeah. And then uh, it's already so it's already pretty hard to do even in French. Oh, even even with only four thousand. Yeah, it depends on the. Yeah. Yeah, because if you if you're doing running a complex algorithm yeah. on this. You know, you have to be pretty efficient. So, um, okay. So, um, so, so these are kind of roughly the scales of graphs that you can try and work with. Even um, so, we're going to look at one of the more kind of basic, um, interesting things you can do on a graph, which is to try and list or count all the triangles. Um, so, a, t a triangle. Um, is going to be a set of three vertices um, where all pairs um, have edges. Um, so this is a, it's also, you can also say this is a clique on the sides three. Right, so, so an example triangle up here would be A, B, and D. Right, A, B, and C would not be a triangle because there's no edge between A and C. Okay, so, that, so what we want to do is, given a large graph, we want to count how many different triangles there are. And, and we actually want to try and list all the triangles. Or we want to say, for each vertex, for each vertex, how many triangles um, does, uh, does that vertex have associated with it? How many triangles does, um, is, is each, um, is each vertex part. So the triangle counting problem, um, uh, triangle counting, um, um, for each vertex, um, count how many 
and triangles. It is. Okay. So in this case, A is in one triangle, B is in two triangles. So it's also in this triangle with C and D. In this case, there are only two triangles in this graph. Um, so the, the triangle counting is, is, uh, is interesting for a, a, a few reasons where you're trying to analyze the social network. Um, a, a vertex which has a lot of triangles is really kind of like very well connected um, in the graph. It means that they have a lot of essentially friends who are, um, who are friends with each other. They're fairly active. A vertex which does not have too many triangles is interacting with, with different entities in the graph, but those entities are not interacting with each other, and this is not as tight of a connected um, as a connection. And so, some people who do um, analysis of these social networks, either to try and say who is influential or how strong is the connection in the graph, how, in, how um, can we recommend friends, this listing of the triangles is, is an important. Um, I think to try and study. So it's it's been it's been noted as a problem that's that people have wanted the answer to this, but it's not necessarily easy to um, to actually do. Um, okay. So one other definition we'll need is that um, um, the degree of a vertex is going to be the um, number of of edges it is in, and we'll say that NV is going to be the neighborhood um, um, of the, it's, it's going to equal um, all edges, it is, okay, so, so the neighborhood, so let's, for example, the neighborhood of A here, is going to be equal to B and, and D, right? The neighborhood of B is going to be equal to A, C, and D. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so, so what I'm going to go through today actually is, is going to be some algorithms and kind of the presentation is mainly going to be borrowed from a paper um, by um, Suri, um, Suri and um, Vassil Vitsky um, from 2011. Um, so, and, and I link to that paper on the web page if you want to read it. They have slides too, so you can. The material is pretty well presented there. Um, so, um, okay. So if, if so, if we want to. So um, one thing to note before I jump into this, the um, one thing about MapReduce is it's used best when the input is really large. The, the mass of data is large, meaning you want to use parallel machines for it. You want to parallelize it. And also the output here, the end result of the, of the last reducer, is a fairly large set. If you want to get back a single answer, like the average of some large number of numbers, MapReduce is not probably going to be just the right tool. This is more, um, you, you, you'll probably want to use as something that's somewhat similar, but not quite MapReduce or Hadoop. You want the output also to be large. So in this case, when we're for each vertex, we want to count how many triangles it's in. So if you have you know um, um, 65 million vertices, then you know the output is going to be size roughly 65 million. You have to list the number for each of these vertices, right? So the output will also be large. You're going to have to write this out to disk. All right. So if um, so, so let's start. So uh, with triangle counting, how would you, um, what's kind of a, the naive first way you would try and do this? You would try and figure out all the triangles that you have something in it. Let's not worry about MapReduce yet. Um, and let's say for every vertex, you have access um, to, to its list of neighbors. 
right? So for every vertex, you can iterate through the list of neighbors it has. What's a good way of trying to kind of list out or trying to enumerate and count all of the all of the triangles? So let's, um, so let's just do it. Let's list out all the triangles for, um, for vertex A. And all you have is its neighborhood list. You have B and D as its neighborhood list. Right? So what are the poss if you just knew its neighborhood list, what are the possible triangles? Just looking at this. It has to have three things, right? So it has to be, it has to include A. And it has to have two of its neighbors, right? Because both of its, any, any triangle has to have all the edges, so it has to be things that A is connected to. So you can list, for A, you can list out all the pairs in here, and then you want to check if those are connected, right? So then you would you'd say, let's check to see if B and D are connected. And it turns out they are, that means you have a triangle. So now if you want to do the same thing with node B, you want to say, how, what are all the triangles of B? So it's going to be with B, A, and D, and with B, C, and D, right? So what you want to do is you want to look at its node set and look at all pairs, right? So this one's a little bit more interesting than A. You want to list out B with the pair um, A, C. This is one guess. Another guess is B, A, D, and the, and the third guess is B, C, and A, uh, and C, and D, okay? So once you've listed these out, then you need to go and check whether there's an edge here, right? For A and C, there's no edge. So these are all the possible triangles, so this is not a triangle. For A and D, there is an edge. That means this one is, is a good triangle. Um, and for C and D, there's an edge. So that's a, that's, a, that's a good triangle. OK. So, um, so, so if we're to write this algorithm out, um, um, for all V and V, we're going to say, for all U and W in the, um, the node set, of, in, the, in the neighbor set of V, that if U and W is in the edge set, then you want to say that um, the, t um, the triangles of V is going to get the triangle V, U, W, right? Or you would have a counter here and you would increment this counter. Right? Okay, so let's say that you can do, let's just assume you can do each of these operations in, in constant time. You can look up whether this edge exists in constant time. Then how long is this, is this algorithm going to run? You can list out all of the, you know, each pair. You you can iterate through them in in a um, it takes constant time to, in each iterator step. How long is this algorithm going to take? Hmm? Okay. So so. N is and it's uh, so it it's going to depend on the degrees of the vertices. So, so for each vertex, how many, if you're right out in terms of its degrees, how many edges do you have to check? N minus one. N edges. No, you've listed all pairs, right? Okay. So, so N minus it's, one. What? N minus one. So it's, um, so let's say, so, 
it, it, if you list out the degree of V, you know, so if you were to write out just this part here, so not, th th this is a loop of size n. This is going to take O of um, the degree of V squared, right? Because there are going to be, um, the degree of V choose two different, um, different vertices, right? If I had this set here, I list out only three things. Uh, but let's say that this set was the size on 100, right? How many pairs do I have to list out? It would be roughly 100 squared, right? Um, roughly 100 squared over 2, right? So, um, so it's the degree of the square. So then the total runtime here, I list over all of these, it's going to be um, the, the, the sum over V of the degree of V squared. Okay, so, so, um, um, so now if, if all the vertices have um, a fairly small degree, right, then, then this is not going to be too bad. But you could have a graph that does not have too many um, edges in it but some of the nodes um, are going to have uh, a very large degree, right? So you could, have, um, you could have a graph that looks like... Like, a, like the node corresponds to a celebrity who has two yeah. million people following him. All um, right, so this is Twitter, and this node is Ashton Kutcher, right? So he, I don't know, at some point he was like one of the first people to get to a million followers, right? So Twitter, most people don't have too many, um, too many edges, but you know Ashton Kutcher had like a million people. So now listing out all of his, uh, all pairs of his followers to see if they were connected, um, that would take a million squared steps, right? That's that's going to take a long time. Even though maybe most of these people are only following, you know, um, you know, um, you know, just him, just Ashton Kutcher, and and maybe a couple of you know, and like in their brother, and no one else is following their brother, right? So this graph has has the number of edges is the same roughly as the number of vertices, um, but this uh, the, the runtime of the algorithm is still going to be roughly m squared, right? So this is still going to this is going to take too long. Okay, but um, but as an exercise. Let's try and translate this. So, so, so let's let's translate this algorithm into MapReduce, and we'll see if we parallelize it. You know what happens? Is is doing this in MapReduce parallelizing this gonna gonna make this any faster? Okay. So so as we're doing this in. doing this in MapReduce, um, remember that each of the input is going to be one of these key value pairs. Okay, so, um, so if you do this in MapReduce, what we're going to write out is a couple of very simple kind of steps we do for each mapper and reducer. And we'll need um, basically two rounds, but there'll be a, a third round where we need to clean some stuff up. Um, so, so in the first mapper, we're going to take in the input of the mapper is, is going to be a U, V, that's in the edge set. So for each of, each of these edges, this is, we're going to look at each key value pair individually. The, it basically is going to store one of these edges, and we're going to output to some set of key value pairs. Is I Thinking about how we're doing this, I'm wondering, wouldn't it be easier, instead of looking at the set of all vertices, to look at the set of all edges, and then just what, uh, uh, see if there's a, um, look at the two vertices of, at the end, at either end of the edge, and see if they, if any of them happen to point to the same thing, in which case we count a triangle and move on. Um, Let's see, so if you had this star graph, um, so, 
So you, you, you're going to, for, um, um, for a given edge, so let's, let's look back at this, this star graph here. You're going to run into basically the same problem. Okay, so, so let's say I'm looking at this, this edge here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to look at this node. And now I have to propose a, another node to say whether this node might complete a triangle. All right, so let's say for each of the vertices, I'm going to look at all of their neighbors. For, but this vertex has a lot of neighbors. So for each neighbor, I have to check whether it's connected here. And this neighbor, I have to check whether it's connected here. For this neighbor, check whether it's connected. And then I move to this edge and I do the same thing. Yeah, they're, they're, now, they're, it, if there, we there can, will be some similar issues like yeah. that in, in certain graph situations. I mean, so, uh, so I, I, I'm just wondering, is it uh, is this something that was thought of and rejected for a reason, or is this something that? Well, so it, it's a little bit, so we'll see in a second how to fix this to be a little bit okay. faster. Um, it's a little bit easier to see if you're looking at the edges, but it's it may be, it's, it's not as, you're still listing out, you know, you're still essentially getting to a step where you're, you're, uh, you're listing out a large set of nodes and then, um, and then checking whether they form, um, like, you're checking whether they have an appropriate edge. Um, so, um, so, so uh, it's going to run into the same issues. We'll, um, so th th this won't exactly solve it. I'm, I'm sure okay. people have thought of it, but it, this alone did not fix the issue. Okay. Um, this is not an algorithm for the proposed problem. What? This is not an algorithm from, for the proposed problem. Yeah, so, so we want to count the number of vertices for this uh, number of triangles for this vertex. So we're going to take this. So we're going to take this, and we're going to do um, plus equals one third. Okay, so we're adding adding one third to here because this triangle. There's three different ways we can count it, right? We could have started with this vertex. Um, so, so I actually need to add add this for tu. Um, tu is plus equals one third, and tw plus equals one third. Because if I started with u, I'd also count the triangle. If I start with w, I'd also count. The so I had one third for each of these counters. Does that answer? Yeah. No, I I agree with it. So oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I, did, I I think it's still not fairly correct, but okay. Because U W is a pair. It's not a set. Um. So if it's a pair, it's never counted six times. Yeah. So I, I'll be a little. Uh, okay, doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little sloppy with whether it's ordered or not and how to list them up, but it's, um, it, 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 you only want to list out each pair once. You don't want to also list out here, you don't also want to look at W and U. So, um, okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to, um, Oh, so then, uh, yeah. So okay. So I'm I'm gonna look at every edge, which is how they're stored, and then I'm gonna break this. I I'm gonna create two key value pairs. Um, one where the key is u, and the value is v, and the other is where the key is v, and the value is u. Okay. So now when I do the shuffle phase, what is this doing? This is this is the shuffle phase aggregates in one set by u. And the other, it aggregates by v. That means, for, because every edge I'm doing this, that means for for um, vertex u, I'm sending all of the edges that include u to one of the reducers. Okay, so so that means in um, in reducer one, what my input is going to be is some vertex, and I, and then I'm going to have a set of all u1, u2, up to u, say, k, um, you know, um, such that v, uh, uh, v ui is in, in e. Right, so I'm going to get all the, 
I, I mean, it aggregated to each vertex all the edges. So I'm getting its node set. Right? So this is exactly the node set of the Okay, so, so that's an example of what the, the map is supposed to do. It's supposed to aggregate the important information all into one spot. So now I can process it. Um, so then the output of this, so what am I going to do here? Now that I have the node set, I need to list all of these pairs. Right, so, so I'm going to list, um, the output of this will be, um, a set of key value pairs where each key value pair will be u and um, and w. I'll, this is the key. The key is now a set and the value is going to be this vertex um, such that um, u and w is in this node set of b. So I'm listing out a set of these key value pairs that's enumerating all of these pairs here. Okay, and now um, I'm, I'm uh, so th this is the end of one round. I haven't stopped yet. I'm going to need three of these rounds. Um, so now the, um, <coughs> um, so now the mapper in round two, it can, it can know that this is now stored on disk. It can take this as the input. Right? And, and the original edge set is also sorted, but it's going to take both of these um, um, let's call this set W as like um, as a wedge because you can you know that V U and W it forms this wedge. We don't know if it's closed or not, right? So this is wedge. So it's going to it's going to take two things from every um, um, U, W, and V in the wedge is going to output um, 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 it's going to output this again. Um, so it's going to send this to the shuffle bits. So the, um, the, at the end of the reducer, I haven't shuffled. I can't aggregate things. It's on this. The mapper does this, so now I can aggregate on this pair uh, of UW. And I'm also going to take things out of the edge set um, for every U and W in the edge set. I'm also going to output um, U, W. So this, is, again, is the key. And the values is going to be some special symbol. Okay. Can I ask you, is, is there U and W are the element neighborhood of V? Yeah, so in this case, they always are. Okay. In this case, all I'm saying is that this U and W is in the edge set. So I'm sending a special signal. Okay, so if you look now at what happens at, at the reduce step, Two, what it's going to get in, the input to this is going to be a U and, and W, which is going to be a pair of vertices. Um, and then it's going to get a set of V1, V2, up to VK. And then it, um, and then it might also get this special symbol. Okay, so this is, um, right, so, so, so how do we interpret this? Um, so this is the input to the reducer. We've been, we've aggregated by these pairs of vertices. We have two parts to, that, that are coming along with this. In this case, all of these are vertices that we know are connected to both U and W. Both, all these vertices are, uh, are forming one of these wedges. Right? So if you have U and, and W, then what you're getting 
is this is V1, and I know that this is connected. I also have V2, I, I know that this is connected. And I have V3, I know that this is connected. Right, so all of these V's in the set here correspond to these, the corner of these wedges. Okay. Now, I may or may not have this special symbol. So, if I do have this special symbol, um, then what does it mean? Yeah, so, so if I have this special symbol, it means that I have this edge here that connects all these triangles, right? So, if this is present, then I have, you know, triangles. You can say K triangles. I'm excited at triangles. Um, so if I don't have this, then I just have these open wedges with no triangles here. So, so what this does is I say if if this is present, um, then um, so the, then I need to report I need to report that I have these triangles. So I'm going to output a key value pair um, for each um, VI. Um, uh, um, so I'm going to output one third, right? Because I, I, I'm going to be counting these triangles possibly, um, possibly three different ways. I also need to handle these, these U and W here, right? So in, in this case, I also need to write out um, U, and now this is going to be, I K these things here, so I'm going to have K over, over three of them. So, and then I need to do the same um, um, for W, K over three. Okay, so, um, um, at this point, I've almost done. Um, so, so then I need this last phase to clean up. This map three is um, is not going to do anything. Um, and then the third reducer is um, is just going to do a, um, a standard aggregate. So, it's, you're going to get in this vertex and um, and you, you, you gain these values K1, K2, um, and you're going to output this vertex and then the sum over all these K. Okay, so this is a standard aggregate. So this was the same thing we did for the word count. right? We had each of the words, we, we got a bunch of counts, and then we just added them up. Right? So this is a very common thing that you do in the reduced phase. Okay, so so that's how so that's basically how you would implement this in um, in MapReduce. So you have to do work now to um, to kind of for each to, to actually construct this neighborhood set, um, and then to check if these guys are um, if these guys have an edge, you have to do this extra uh, this round where you send. Um, each of these uh, these pairs that you found that you want to test to the same place as all the edges to see if they're there, right? So it's not easy to actually just look up to see if this edge exists. You have to do work to actually you, you, you basically spend around checking all these things at once. Okay, so um, so so now that we have this algorithm, we've taken this thing which is going to take possibly is going to take take a long time. Um, it's going to be the sum of all the degrees squared, um, which might end up being a very large number. We've done it in MapReduce. Is, is, is this going to solve all our problems? Oh, well, it turns out not quite. Right? So um, this, the paper that I'm basing this on, they ran it on um, um, 
Um, I think the slide journal graph with about five million, or I think at the, it was a smaller version with four million nodes, and about, I think about 50 million edges. And it, and this took about an hour, um, about an hour to run, which is, is not too bad, but they're able to show that they could get it down to about um, like two or three minutes using using a slightly different thing. Um, and the problem is most of, so the, you know, this step is very well parallelized. You're just scanning through the edges, which are fairly evenly distributed on the on the uh, on the servers. Um, so it was, but listing out all of these pairs, um, if if um, no, that should be what that's wait. Let's see. So no, that should be really easy. yeah. So so this is going to be. Um, so if so, so what you've done is this node may have now something like um, close to a million uh, edges. So each of these edges, you're going to have to list out the pairs, right? So this step of listing these out and sending these on the network and shuffling these is going to take a long time. Um, so so this step is is really going to be is really going to be slow um, for some of the vertices. Now they they, they they kind of showed a plot of how long the different reducers took to run, and most of them finished in just a couple minutes, but a couple of them lasted an hour. So your the parallelism is not really helping all that much. You're having one task that's taking a really long time while everything else finishes. So a lot of your processors are sitting idle, not really getting the speed up they need. Um, so once you have them. Uh, We've got a curse of the next to last reducer at the same time we have a curse of the last reducer. Yeah, so well, you know, you have the recurse of the last reducer at each round potentially. And this is a case of the curse of the last reducer in the first round. Right. Um, okay, so Okay, so this this works this works okay, it solves the problem, but it's not very efficient when you have skew in the data, which is it's not something kind of um, that you can get around with. The word count we had this word, uh, you know, had the word the occurred seven percent of the time, and you could largely get rid of this by using a combiner. I mentioned um, it's not entirely, but it, it's going to go a long way to getting rid of that skew issue. But here, this is actually a structural issue. Um, we can't necessarily get rid of the skew by somehow combining stuff before we send them off. Um, so we need to kind of think more carefully about the algorithm. Um, how do we avoid having, basically what we want to avoid are these vertices that have um, the vertices that have a very large degree. We don't want to have to list out all pairs um, of, of their edges. We don't want to list out all wedges associated um, with Ashton Kutcher. Uh, that, would, that would take too long and most of them probably would be trying. Um, so how would we do that? So another thing, notice, is that one other thing that we're doing, which is kind of silly, is we're counting each vertical, each of the triangles three times, right? So we had to add to the count one third because we were going to count it two more times. What if we could? Smartly, only count each triangle once. So, so we somehow, if you have a triangle, you want to assign it to one of its vertices and say, you know, I somehow want to know that only that vertex will be counting the triangles. Okay, so let's say I've got this um, this example graph again. So it's going to be one of these, basically a star graph, but I'm going to have a couple of these. Um, it's like a color graph. Okay. Okay, so I want to, um, um, so I want to count each of these triangles. Let me do... 
No, I don't. So I, I, I want to. So now, how many triangles are there? There are only going to be three, three, three triangles here, right? And, and I want to tell only one of the vertices to count all the triangles. And let's let's say I've done I've done work, so I know. So so, so what are things I can things I can associate with the vertex that I can I can use? Well, what are the properties that we well, talk about? Oh, go ahead. I'm saying if uh, the vertex are in order and uh, you decide that you are only going to count the triangle if the all the three vertex you get is in ascending order, then you count it only. Okay, so let's say I did A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, it becomes a problem with H. D. So now A is lowest in ascending order, I tell A to count the triangles, but A is the star. Yes. That's the problem. So A is not a good choice. Yes. Well, which one would be a good choice? All the others. Except all, the, all the other ones, right? Except yeah. um, so so what's, what's bad about A? What property does A have that we don't want? It shouldn't be the first, I mean, as in, it should have been uh, somewhere the last, not the A. It should be a G, F, or something. Well, what if I reorder them so A is, is this one is last right, in the order? I, I, I don't know. And, then you'll have a proper parallelization in the map reduce. Yeah, but I need to know how to order them well. So how, how would I order them if, if I could? So if then this the degree. Good, good, right. So, so this one has, has a degree 2, this one 2, this one 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, and this one. Okay, so now each triangle, let's say I tell the one with the smallest degree that one is in charge of counting it. Right, so this triangle has to, these verses have degree 6, 3, and 2. So I'm going to assign this one to, uh, this triangle is going to be assigned to D, this triangle is going to be assigned to H, and this triangle is going to be assigned to B. Right, so now I only have do we, the... Do we have to artificially assign a full ordering on there to break ties in number of neighbors? So you can... So, so assume you have an, an initial ordering based on the... So you, you're going to have an index associated with each of the vertices based on how you store them in memory. And you break ties based on that index. That would be one way to do that. Right, so you define an ordering and it's and it's by degree, and uh, and you break ties by index. So. Okay, yeah, but it is a, but it, the net effect is we do have a total order. Yeah, so we can give it a total order. Okay, so now, how would we change this algorithm in order to do this? Um, so we still look for each vertex, we look for all pairs, but we only do this um, if we know that D is less than U, or that, well, let's say, um, the degree of D is less than degree of U, and the degree of W, or of, of D, is less than degree of, of W. And if there's a tie, we'll assume that we're using this total order. Okay, so now we're only, we're adding, you know, this step in here. So not every pair that's in the neighborhood set, but only the pairs, we're only going to look at the pairs where V has the smallest degree. Okay, so then we can check if this UV is in the edge set. And then we, if this is true, then we're going to add one to each of these instead. We should look. So in, in this extra algorithm, we're going to add um, plus equals one because we're only counting the vertex. The, we're only counting the triangle once. Okay, so so I've got this extra if condition in here. How do I build? Now I need to build this into this into matrix, right? So. So the first step, I'm just creating, I'm just separating so I have all these. So now I need to look in the reduce 
step. And um, I have to. Um, in the first step, you don't need to create two. You can create just one. In the first step. Uh, yeah, so, well, I, I don't know the degree of these vertices yet. So, um, and, and I don't know the degrees of these guys either. So. I should forget how they did this. So, um, so, so, so I somehow need, before the process is trying to admit all pairs of these things, and I only want to do it if, um, if the degree of V is less than um, the degree of U um, for, for, each of, for each of its neighbors. So, so I only want to send it, as you're right, so, so before I do this, I want to know the degrees of both um, uh, um, both u and v. Um, so, so I think I need, this is not, yeah, so they, they somehow have pre-computed um, with each edge um, what the degree of these, uh, these things are. So, so all I need to do here is, um, is, uh, if the degree of u is less than the degree of v, then I output uh, u to v. Um, otherwise, I output v u. V and u is going to be a bad choice ready on the board, but okay. So, so I, I output only to the vertex that has the smaller degree. So th then I know that each you, of these you, vertices you're doing this in this list. Part of the what? You're doing this as part of the reduction, not part of the map, right? Yes, the, no, this is done in, inside the map step. Okay. So this is in, inside the map step. Um, How would we know the degree at this step? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I think that the graph yes. normally are represented as a node and adjacent list. So all the are right. Yeah. So so there, uh, um, so there are a couple ways. So one way is that you assume that the input of the graph is stored. So all of um, you, you store all the edges associated with with one of the vertices next to each other. Um, so that you you can um, so so that with um, with all of the vertices you have to store it somewhere. Um, or you, you can calculate this easy. Um, if not, you need to spend another round of mapreduce to do this. Right? So, so how would we take all the edges and um, um, so, so, so how would we in, in one round of mapreduce go from um, go from all of the edges to uh, um, to all the edges uh, with their degrees. And so this is um, so this is worth it, right? So the the input is is going to be um, unordered u and, and v. Um, and so all we need to do is we need to order these in the order of, of their degrees, right? Um, so let's see. So we want to take all these. From E, and we can send this to the output can be U and V, U and V, 
and v and u. Why on the else step do we flip the u and the v? Why not say for the else clause just throw this pair away because we know that whichever mapper got the inverted pair is going to keep it. Um, so I'm assuming the edges, in, in this setting, I'm assuming the edge is listed once. So I'm, I'm given an unordered edge, and I'm going to output the two different ordered pairs, essentially. Um, so now I only output the, the ordering so that it has, has it's the right, so that the, the one with the smaller degree is the, is the key, and one with large degree is the value. Okay, so we are starting by iterating over the edges now. Yeah. That's, okay. that's what we are doing, and, and we're doing this again in, in order to get all the, so now I'm going to put all the edges out, in the, so they're all listed, so the one with the, with the smaller degree um, comes first, right? So, so this reduce now, I'm going to be, I'm going to get as the input some V and the set um, Maybe I can't do this in one round. How would I do this? So, so I have here, now I can get, um, what I can do is I can list the degree of V. As, I can, as my output, I can have V, U, I, and uh, as, a, as a pair, U, I, and K. V, U, and then the um, so for, for all the UIs, I can list out um, a an order pair where the where the key will be V and UI, and the output and the value will be. Um, this vertex and it's um, and and um, and this is the degree of vertex V. Right, so this value is the degree of V. Okay, so now, um, um, so I've done this, but uh, if I do this, I don't have both of the degrees of both edges of the pair. I've listed out this pair, but I don't have, you know, um, uh, the, um, I don't know what the degree of UI is. All right, so how would I fix that? So um, do you think I can do it in, in one round, or is there, I don't know, I, I, this thing I don't know the answer to. Can you do this in one round, or do you need two rounds to do this? In the map, since you listed also you will be, so, in the reduce steps, a similar step is going to happen for you also. Yeah, so a similar step will happen for you. That's right. So um, but I don't have it. I don't have it on the same reducer. That you got mapped to a different reducer in the shuffle phase. But all you need is the degree of a single vertex of an edge. What does you need the degree of an edge? Yeah. Well, I want to know the degree of both of the vertices so I can list them in the order. So this, this you can do in one way one round. Yeah, so how do you do it? You just map the vertex, say it with its neighbor. And then in the reduce you're gonna get a vertex and all it's the way that you did, but then you just sum the number of neighbors. So 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 this tells me the degree of V, but I want the degree of each UI to know whether V has a smaller what degree. What does it mean degree of a pair? I want the degree of the vertex UI, right? So I'm yeah, given you're gonna get it in a different reduce. Right. So so now can I do that? And do I need another round of map reduce in order to do that? So, so I, I can show you one way of how to do this. So I have map one, and maybe we can discuss whether we can do it in, in, in another round. Reduce one. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, so then map two, I'm going to get as, as input some pair V UI. Um, or, in fact, I can just write, 
have here UI. And this mapper is not going to do anything. Um, what I want to do is aggregate by these UIs. And then I'm also going to create um, um, so, so then I'm going to get um, for some value u I'm going to get um, this set of um, v1 k1 v2 k2 and so on okay so now my output here is for i equals you know one to uh, t if and this is going to go up to v t k t right so so if if k i is less than um, say k i is greater than t which is the number of, of edges I have from u, that's the degree of u, so t is less, then I'm going to output um, u vi. If this condition is not true, I'm not going to do anything. Doesn't this have for counting the degrees, doesn't this have the same problem as we had in uh, counting the triangles? Uh, we had the problem in the reduced one, and it seems like the same. Uh, because there will be million pairs for that uh, star kind of thing. Let's see. So the, the problem I don't want to do is I have that many edges, so I don't want to do a million squared. A million turns out I can do. A million squared is going to be hard, right? So am I listing out? Um, so so I. I think I'm not, um, I'm, I'm only doing work linear in the number of edges. Right, so here, um, um, so each edge I'm, you know, I'm doing two things. So each, here I'm counting this and I'm, so th there's, there's a, this, the sum over all reducers of the value k is the number of edges. Right, um, so then I'm only outputting one thing for each edge here. <coughs> So if uh, a million pairs go to the same reduced reduce sign, is it fine? What if if, if, if a million pairs go to the same reducer, is it fine? Uh, yeah. So that's, that's still going to be still probably going to be a problem. Um, but it's uh, it's it's better than sending out a million squared from one thing. Maybe a million on one reducer you can even handle. Um, so you're probably going to do. You're probably going. To, you might be able to. Um, the combiner may not work here. Um, yeah, that's, that's still going to be slow. There, there, there may be a better way of doing this. For aggregation, you can use a combiner, right? No. Um. Yeah. So, um. So you can do a combiner, but they may be on separate reducers. Um, oh, I see. But you'd have probably a bunch of these steps on the same reducer, and that would combine things on it. Yeah, I mean, you can remove the reducer one and use the combiner. Yeah, so probably in this step, you could just do, do a combiner. Because you'd have a bunch of these probably on the same, same mapper here. Um, yeah, so the question is, so, so this is going to output them in the right order. Question is, can you do this this whole step and just um, in only one round? Not, can we sure. count the number of neighbors and uh, like for each uh, vertex? That would be the degree, right? Yeah, but right. So, but if the edges are listed separately, then then uh, then it's not clear how to do how how to get on get the information onto each edge in one round of mappers. Right, so I can so I so I've done this in two rounds here, right? Can I can I get the same effect using only one round of methods? 
So if there's, so remember I mentioned in a lot of, in like Hadoop, there's a pretty, pretty large lag um, for in between routes and maybe on the order of a, of a few minutes, um, depending on your implementation, um, on, on which version you have in your cluster. So you want to avoid doing extra round here. Um, this already took three rounds. Now I added two rounds to it. Can I move this into some of there so I reduce the total complexity? I'm not sure. If someone wants to do some extra credit, then you can uh, try and figure this out. Uh, so. um, all right, so, so I'm, I've basically run out of time. So let me, um, th there's some kind of the analysis that you can show that if you add in this step where you can look at the degrees or you have this degree information handy somehow um, already, um, then in, in practice at least in the experiments they talked about in the paper, um, you can, uh, um, this reduces the runtime to just on the order of five minutes where the, the version without this check took on the order of an hour. And all the reducers finish around the same time. Um, and in fact, you can show that the total amount of runtime in this algorithm, where I added in this check, where I assumed I had all the degrees, um, is going to be um, um, is going to be O of m O of m to the three halves, mm -hmm. which turns out to be um, which turns out to be as good as you can do. There are worst case examples where there are m to the three half different triangles. Uh, the light pipe graph, yeah. So you can, you can, uh, um, where it's, this algorithm will take this long and there are exactly that many triangles. Um, so, um, whereas the, so it can be much smaller than the degree, that, uh, um, the sum of the degrees could be, I think, uh, could be n, uh, could be m cubed. Um, some of the degrees squared. If, if, if you're on a, if you're on a dense graph, um, but I guess any algorithm needs to take that long. On the lollipop graph, I think that would take um, I think it's at least m squared times. You know? No, I'm not sure. I think it's at least on um, the naive algorithm. Oh, the naive. Yeah. Which one? The, the first version. Yeah, the first version. Yeah, it's m to the three. Send it to the three. Okay. Yeah. You go around. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, so, so by just doing this extra simple check, you can you can uh, you can avoid having too much um, you know this curse of the slash reducer of exploding things up and listing out um, pairs, you know, when you don't need to. Um, okay, so I just mentioned there's a third thing in the algorithm. I mean, the third, third algorithm in the paper that works about as well as this one, where they take, well, uh, we'll talk about a similar technique in, in, in another lecture, so, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll save that to you.